I'm joined now by political analyst and commentator Bill Crane. Bill, thanks for your time. As we know, it's the first time we'll see a former president face criminal charges. How worried should Trump be about the charges he's about to face? I happen to be among those who think this particular case of the roughly half dozen or so that are pending in various jurisdictions against Mr. Trump, his organization, or his prior campaigns, this is one of the lesser cases. Granted, he did defraud um, the campaign finance laws using monies not for a political purpose, allegedly to pay off a former lover who uh, is a woman of notoriety. But Michael Cohen, his, his bag man, attorney for one time, his fixer, has already pled guilty to the charge of the transfer of those funds and has served time. So there's you know, one, some question there about the timing of this. But remember, all of those activities occurred in 2016. This is now 2023. So one of the other things you're constitutionally guaranteed is a right to a speedy trial by a jury of your peers. And there's got to be some question if this were to be challenged, and it will be by Trump's lawyers, if, if the trial is to proceed. So what do you think the period uh, the of discovery might... will actually look like? I mean, who would we like to see appear on the stand? Well, we haven't obviously seen the indictments yet. There's some discussion. There may be other issues in cases, including the obstruction charges relative to documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago and the president's residence and in Trump Tower being lumped into this case, that it isn't all just about the Stormy Daniels payments. So that's going to speak to who, who actually is on the stand. I will forecast that there will be a trial, that Donald Trump either will not be convicted or will be overturned on appeal. But I think in many ways, as, as your reporters have discussed, this helps buttress his presidential campaign. This attention, the news networks in America are following his plane and movement today like it's the low-speed chase of O.J. Simpson many years ago. They will continue to do that throughout this process. He's already gotten two weeks of that kind of coverage because he said two weeks ago he expected to be arrested and arraigned on Tuesday. Well, it's two weeks from that time to today. Tomorrow is the Tuesday that he actually is expected to be arraigned. So the attention is driving his fundraising. The initial 24 hours brought in $4 million. We understand there's somewhere between 5 and $7 million in new campaign donations that have come in since the indictments have been announced. And among a particular sect of the Republican Party and his very loyal base, Donald's the guy. So yep. that base will only get stronger. But I don't see him as a viable candidate in the general election. And rank-and-file Republicans do not want to be stuck with him as their nominee. But many Republicans have actually gotten on board with the rhetoric that this is a political hoax. Do you think that that rhetoric will continue once the details of the charges are revealed? Again, we don't know. But I, I would say you will continue to see Donald Trump defended by leading Republicans as much for the reason as those Republicans want Trump voters. Meaning trial goes forward, the trial doesn't go forward, they will still have been a loyal soldier to speak about the politicization of this process, whether or not there's a strong case. But the January 6th commission hearings, the Georgia and uh, tar uh, district attorney investigation in Fulton County, Georgia, over tampering with the Georgia election results, the attempts to storm the U.S. Capitol and, and have an insurrection around the certification of the Electoral College, I think all those much stronger cases that could put much more harm on President Trump, both legally and his presidential campaign. It strikes me that though this one's moving forward first and is the first criminal indictment of a former president, um, it's the, le the lesser of the potential cases. You, you mentioned the funds that the Trump Organization has raised since the announcement of the indictment. You know, how can we imagine that this indictment is going to embolden the broader masses? We understand, of course, his niche supporter base are very much loyal, supporting him through this, and, and, and no doubt this is going to become a useful tool for him in terms of those voters. But how will these charges affect broader public perception of him? Well, he is not electable in a general election. There are Democratic, centrist, independent voters who will never again even consider voting for Donald Trump. I do not believe because of that he wins the Republican nomination. But right now, he's a giant among midgets, with the possible exception of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. But we're still pretty early in the process. Iowa is January of 2024. We're not anywhere near there yet. Uh, we are in the very early stages of presidential candidates announcing they're in the field. So there's plenty of time for Mr. Trump to make actions and take choices that won't be helpful to him. But right now, the spotlight, the glare, and his ability to claim victimhood 
is raising him money and is raising his profile and his name identification against a lesser known field of candidates. It's going to be very interesting to see how it impacts things moving forward towards the general election. Bill Crane, thank you very much for your time. Take care.